Well, hey there, welcome to New Hope Community Church Online. We're so excited that you are joining us today. Hey, if we haven't met before, my name is Justin Domino. I'm your host today. Uh, so I'm gonna be in the comment section. Kelly Larson and some other volunteers too are in the comment section. So if you've got any praise reports or you know any prayer requests that you have, feel free to put it down in the comments or you can directly message us if it's a little bit more uh, private. But we would love to pray for you. That's the beauty of online church. So we can still do church for the most part, right? On line and we can still talk with each other, pray with each other, it's a huge gift. Hey, today's message is titled Jesus in the Woods. I think when you go out in the woods, some people are very woodsy and we love it. Some of us are like, mm, that's not my thing, I don't like ticks, whatever it is. But when you go out into the woods, it kind of feels like you're close to the earth. It kind of feels like you're close to creation. And this is a feeling that, that I get every time I'm out in the woods. But I think that this relates a lot to our faith. And we're going to learn about that today. So I'm excited about that. We have a couple of worship songs too. So all in all, our service here is going to be about 45 minutes. And we would just love for you to, to interact with us and, and to worship together with us and to learn about God with us. But before we jump into that, I just want to say thank you so much for all of you who continue to give generously to New Hope Community Church. We believe that God is a generous God. He gave His one and only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. And because of that, we want to be like God. We want to be just like Him and less like ourselves. And so we become generous people. And when you give to New Hope Community Church, it matters. It goes to change and transform lives. And we believe that. We believe in our mission and vision. And we believe that you do too. So if you want to give generously today, you can go to nhccmn.org slash give. That link will be in the comment section below too. So you can just click on that link. But it's super safe, super easy, super secure to give online. It's what I do. It's what most people here at New Hope Zoo. Uh, we just love to give online because it's so much easier. But before we get into our service today, let me pray for you and then we'll jump into it. God, we come before you today humbly as your servants. We recognize that we have shortcomings, we have pitfalls, we have sin struggles that we're going through, but Lord, you are perfect and we wanna learn from you. We wanna be transformed by you. And Lord, so would you bless every single person watching today? Would you give them peace and calmness in their hearts and recognize, Lord, that you are the one that can change us. You are the source of all peace and salvation. So we come before you ready and willing to receive you, receive your word, and receive your peace. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, we're going to jump into our service. We would love for you to join us.
in such a world that is riddled with confusion, riddled with chaos, with what appears to be darkness. God, you are the light. You are the life, God. You are the breathing life that causes us to wake up each and every morning breathing this life that you gave to us. God, may we not forget that you made us exactly the way we are supposed to be. God, you're perfect creation. Nothing by mistake. God, you are still sovereign. You are still on the throne. God, your promises ring true now and forever. And God, you are to be glorified in this world. So God, we glorify to you because you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship, Lord. If there's something we can do, there's nothing that we could do that could ever pay back what you did for us, God. But God, let, our, let us pour out our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch me pray. Find in me thine own. i 
is made strong in our weakness. God, we thank you for the strength that you give us. We thank you that your promises are for now and forever. God, we pour out our hearts to you. We exalt your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Well, good morning, church. Every single time we sing that song, Jesus Paid It All, it reminds me of why we gather here as the body of Christ, as New Hope Community Church. It is not so that we can make our lives just a little bit better. It's not so that we can score points with God so we can feel good about our lives. It is because we believe in the crucifixion and the resurrection of the one true living God who paid the price for our sins. Isn't that beautiful? We are free from our sins, walking in freedom because of Jesus. Jesus is our message, and that's a beautiful thing. Well, I hope you guys are doing good this morning. It is a beautiful day, isn't it? The breeze feels good. It just feels so good outside. Hey, if you're here today, uh, I want to give a shout out to all you guys watching on the live stream as well, but if you're here today, if you could fill out the connection card that's on the seat next to you, uh, just write your name and your family's names on that card, and on the way out the door today, just drop it in the giving box. We feel like it's our responsibility that if someone were to get sick here at New Hope, we want to be able to notify everybody who was here in the service so that you guys can know as well. So feel free to fill out that card. And then if you're new, fill out that card as well. We'd love to get to know you and meet you after the service. After the service, we're going to spend some time out on the patio. we got our prayer team, and just we can hang out there as well. And if you're new or if you have any questions, you need prayer for anything, we'd love to be out there with you after the service. Well, I have one big announcement today that I'm excited about um, because I love change. Does everybody here love change? Absolutely not. <laughs> change is a really difficult thing. But we are changing some things up next Sunday. So we are going to go back to our 845 and 1015 services um, here in Cambridge so that we can preach live again. And I know, you know, it's a crazy world right now where people are at home and most of what we're trying to do is online. But sometimes, or especially during this time, it's really good to have a personal connection on stage. So we're going to go back to live preaching next week, which gives us the opportunity to, to change up our service time. So put a mental note, put it on your calendar, whatever you need to do. But we're back to 845 and 1015 next week with live preaching. So invite your friends. It's going to be a great week. Well, I'm going to transition here just in a minute to our kids sermon. We've got a few kids and some kids online. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you so much for your financial generosity. It is so amazing to see how, how you guys and how God's been blessing us over the past couple of months during this pandemic. And the way that I love to look at church giving or tithing, whatever you want to call it, is, you know, how has New Hope blessed you? And if you've been blessed by New Hope, how can you bless New Hope? Or how can you bless the community that you've been living in? It is such a great opportunity, such a blessing to be able to bless one another, both financially and with our time and with everything that we have. But we want to say thank you so much. If you'd like to give today, you can use our giving boxes, which are right out here outside the doors, or you can give online at nhcmn.org slash give. All right, so we've got some kids in the room right now, and I want you guys to pull out your packets and pull out the Skittles specifically. My favorite thing that Pastor Wendy Gordy does is she puts candy in here every single week, and I really want to highlight that because it makes you kids crazy. And what better thing than crazy kids in church, right? All right, so funny story. Five years ago when I got hired at New Hope, which is crazy, five years already, but five years ago at New Hope when I got hired, my first day of work, Pastor Bill, I think it was Pastor Bill, dropped off a three-pound bag of Skittles on my desk because Skittles are my favorite candy. And so I got to work. I was doing a bunch of stuff, doing a bunch of prep stuff because youth group was like three weeks away. And I ate, at the end of the day, I had eaten the entire three-pound bag of Skittles. My tongue was completely raw and actually bleeding. It was disgusting, but it was so good. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to open up the packet of Skittles, and I want you to eat them. Before this service is done, I want you to eat all that candy. If your parents say you can. But here's why I want you to eat them. So when you open a bag of Skittles, you're going to see that all the Skittles are different colors. All the Skittles are different colors. And that's a really good thing. In this series, we've been talking about friendship and having good friends and what it means to have good friends. And I think that it's important to recognize that Skittles are a really good uh, picture of what our friendships should look like. We don't want to always hang out with the same people who are always just like us. People who are different than us are great. In fact, the Bible says that we're all different. We're all the same and that we're all Christians, but we're all different because we have different likes, we have different interests, we do different things. But at the end of the day, we are called to be friends and in relationships with one another. And honestly, even though they all look different, they all taste the same. Don't eat your friends, but they all taste the same, don't they? 
In the Bible, it says that we are called to encourage one another and build one another up, just in fact that we are already doing. That's in the book of 1 Thessalonians. So think about that as you're with your friends. Think about your friends and think about, you know what? My friends are different than me, but I love my friends. And how can you encourage your friends just like our Bible verse today says that we can encourage your friends. So go ahead, eat your Skittles, go crazy, run around, make your parents. I'm kidding. <laughs> I always love making parents mad at me. But, uh, but let's pray before we jump into our sermon today. God, we thank you so much, Lord, that we can gather here as a church, as New Hope Community Church. Lord, we are so blessed. Lord, it is a beautiful day. We just thank you so much for um, your presence in our lives, your sovereignty over everything. Lord, we know that the world today is in chaos. There's so many different things happening. Yet, Lord, when we come to you, we recognize that you are always in control. It doesn't matter what the government's doing. It doesn't matter what our neighbors are doing. It doesn't matter if whatever's going on, Lord, we know that you are in control you are God alone, and we trust you today. So, Father, I pray that you can come into our lives, come into our minds, and come into our hearts, Lord. Remind us that your presence is here. Your presence is with us. We don't have to be in church, although it is good, but we don't have to be in church to have your presence. We don't have to be at the office to have your presence, Lord. You are always with us. And what a great, great promise that is, that, God, you love us and you are here. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, welcome, New Hope, as we continue and actually today finish off our series called Summer with Jesus, Building Relationships. I'm actually in the woods on our Cambridge property by our prayer cabin alongside the lake. And I really would encourage you to utilize the prayer cabin for time away with Jesus. You can do it alone or you can do it with another person. There's enough space but it's just a really great location to get away, to be still, and know God is God. And so I welcome you to take advantage of that. Just contact the office and they can set you on the schedule and get you a key. But we're concluding our series today by talking about Jesus in the woods. Four weeks ago, I started the series talking about Jesus in Colorado and how when Jesus dismissed his disciples in the boat, he went alone up to the mountainside and spent time with his heavenly father and how important that relationship was to him. The following week, Pastor John talked about Jesus up north and how after a super busy day of ministry, feeding the 5,000, Jesus invited the disciples to get in the boat with him and to go away to a quiet place for refreshment and how important that is for us to get up north to, to be refreshed with, with friends. And last week, Pastor Justin talked about Jesus in homes, about just really using our gift of hospitality, about inviting our neighbors into our homes, coworkers, making sure that we're hospitable people as Christ followers and that we are going out and being present among others so that they can see Jesus in us so that we can share the good news of Jesus Christ. And so today then, I just wanna conclude the series on building relationships about talking about Jesus in the woods. Back when I was a senior in seminary getting my master's degree down at Bethel, my wife and I, we were pregnant with our first daughter. And the pregnancy was very hard. We had never been pregnant before, so we didn't know what to expect. But my wife, Sherry, ended up being on six months of bed rest and also a feeding tube where I would feed her daily through this tube. But there were many times where there were days or sometimes a week long where she was in the hospital because of her illness due to the pregnancy. And I remember one distinct moment when I had been at the hospital with her, but needed to get home, get some homework done, get some rest. And it was about 1.30 in the morning, I was studying, and I got a call from the charge nurse at the hospital saying that she was very sick, she was throwing up blood, and, and she was distraught, and could I come in? And you know, I was just beside myself. I was just like, God, what are you doing? 
I was anxious, I was shaking, I was crying, and I didn't know what to do. And so what I did was I called Paul Hepner. Paul was a friend we met at seminary. He's from South Dakota. We got to know he and his wife. And I called Paul and I said, I don't know what to do. And Paul said, don't worry, I'm coming over right now. And Paul came over, he comforted me, he prayed for me and he said, listen, you know, I'm gonna put you in my car and we're gonna go and be at the hospital together with your wife. And he, he spent the night there with me. And it was an amazing uh, relationship and still is. And I would consider Paul one of my fridge friends. You know, fridge friends is sort of a urban dictionary term, but it really means that, you know, these friends that are so comfortable around you or in your home that they'll go and open your refrigerator without even having to ask and just help themselves to anything. And when it comes to relationships in our life, a question I would have for you today and for me as well is do you have fridge friends? Now, I understand the challenge of developing relationships and developing friendships. So much so that every year when I do goals in different areas of my life from spiritual, physical, to educational, to financial, I have a relational goals of being relational. And every year I add to that list the goal of doing one thing a month with men. Since I live with all women and life can get busy, sometimes I just forget to build relationships. So actually I have it written down as one of my goals. Intentionally build men friends. And so building friendships are difficult. It was interesting, statistically, I read an article put out in 2019 by Fox News on friendships stating that the average person has roughly 16 friends. Eight of those friends are people that they like, but they really want to spend one-on-one -on -one time with. Five of those friends are people they like, but would spend one-on-one -on -one time with. But there's only three of those friends that they would consider to be lifelong close friends. Now, what's interesting about that statistic of 16 friends is that it sort of parallels Jesus' life. Jesus had the 12 disciples that would be considered his friends that hung out with him for three years straight. But then he also had four other friends. He had Mary, he had Martha, he had Lazarus, who is Mary and Martha's brother and who Jesus raised from the dead. And then also he had, I believe, Joseph of Arimathea. Because we see at Jesus' crucifixion after he dies, Joseph asks to take Jesus' body and asks to place it in his cut-out tomb. And this is significant because once he placed Jesus' body in that tomb, it could only be used for Jesus' family from there on in. No Jew in that culture would allow any other bodies of any other individuals other than family to be placed in that tomb. I mean, it's real similar to today. I mean, rarely do you go and find a group of friends buried together at a cemetery, right? It's pretty much a plot for families. But it shows the intimacy of Joseph in Jesus' relationship there. And so we recognize that Jesus had these friends, but what's interesting is that out of those friends, out of those 16 friends, Jesus had three closest friends, Peter, James, and John. We see often in scripture how Peter, James, and John are pulled in by Jesus when he expresses his great power or his glory in certain situations. We see it in the story of the raising from the dead of Jairus' daughter, where Jesus shows up at this religious leader's home and his daughter had died. But it was only Peter, James, and John who were invited into the girl's room to see Jesus raise her from the dead. We see Peter, James, and John being invited 
up to the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus is transformed physically, his body illuminated with white and light, and basically exposing his God-like figure, being God in the flesh. And only they were invited in to see him in his ultimate glory. And we see it as well in Jesus' tougher days when he invites him at the Garden of Gethsemane. All the disciples came, but yet Jesus invites Peter, James, and John deeper into the garden to be with him during his difficult times. This is what it says, and this is the picture we get of sort of these three fridge friends from Matthew 26. It says, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, but not my will, but yours be done. You know, the Garden of Gethsemane was a place that Jesus often would go with his disciples to pray. Matter of fact, the word Gethsemane actually means oil press. It was actually a, a grove or a forest of olive trees. Matter of fact, if you go there today, the same trees exist as they did years ago. And so we see Jesus inviting his disciples to come in with him into the garden. But what he's really inviting them to do is to come in to his deepest troubles in his life as he's facing within 24 hours being beaten and being crucified on the cross. And so we see in Jesus' life that he has himself fridge friends that he leans on and that he needs. And so my challenge to each one of us is to develop at least three fridge friends in our lives who we can invite into our lives when we have the greatest trouble in our lives knowing that they will walk with us and be with us. Like Jesus, we reveal our lives to them, just as Jesus was revealing his life to Peter, James, and John. And I just want to give you a couple scriptures here this morning that identify what a good fridge friend really is. And the first one is from Philippians 4, 8, and 9. This is what it says. Finally, brothers, Paul is writing here. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, and if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Paul is saying basically, hey, listen, you follow me as I follow God, you will have the peace of God in your life. Why? Because I'm pursuing what is true, what is noble, what is right, what is praiseworthy, right? What is admirable. That is a fridge friend you want around you, a person that has that character and a person that you can follow. And as you are with them, they help you to become more like Jesus. The other scripture would be Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, which basically says, admonish one another in love. What does that word admonish mean? It means that you have a friend around you 
who when they see you heading down a road that is gonna be destructive for you, they have enough courage and love to challenge you and to say, listen, you're heading down a way where it's gonna destroy your marriage or your relationship with your kid or you're gonna lose your job or your integrity or whatever. And they have the guts to call you on it. And they're gonna slap you upside the head and they're gonna say, hey, listen, wake up or I'm not gonna let you go there because it's gonna destroy you. That's a fridge friend. That's who you want around you. And that's who Jesus placed around him. So again, I challenge us when it comes to our relationships to build relationships where you have at least three fridge friends in your life. You know, it's interesting that there was a study done in Britain about friendships. And they had asked the public to provide quotes on friendship. And the number one quote that won was this, a friend is one who comes in when the rest of the world goes out. What a great statement about a fridge friend. You know, it's interesting that the first problem ever mentioned in scripture wasn't a sin problem, but it was an isolation problem. Pastor Justin mentioned it last week when he talked about how God said it isn't good for man to be alone. And that's why Jesus gives us this example of having friends around him, but also having those three fridge friends, Peter, James, and John. So I wanna leave you with this challenging question. Who can open your fridge at home, but at the same time, open your heart? That is a fridge friend. And I encourage each one of us to pursue developing those friendships. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you have built us for relationship. First of all, with you, vertically, but then secondly, horizontally, with others around us. And that, Jesus, you have given us the example of having friends and having those close fridge friends. And so I pray for each one at New Hope that we would cultivate those fridge friends who at the end of the day, help us to become more like Jesus and walk alongside of us in our day-to-day -day stuff. And so bless each one in your holy name, amen. Let's close off by worshiping him. And would you please stand with us?
fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. In the valley, I know that you're with me. Truly, your goodness and mercy follow me.
for the opportunity to be able to come together and just worship you and just honor the mountains that you've moved in your lives and moved in our lives and will continue to move in our lives. We give you praise and just so much thanks for all of the ability that you do to show us unconditional love, no matter what the times are. In that name we pray, amen. Thank you all so much for coming. If you need prayer, there will be prayer right out on the patio and stay seated until the ushers release you.